It's no secret that the thrill of making a groundbreaking discovery is what draws many people to a career in science. One can only guess at the level of acceleration felt by the scientific community at large after the recent discovery made by Large Hadron Collider. Some scientists have linked the newly discovered object to a ghost because of how enigmatic it is. What exactly did the Collider find? And why was it kept secret for so long? This video about the unknowns of spacetime brings you the latest news that the Large Hadron Collider has made its first ever discovery. The Large Hadron Collider is largely unknown to the general public. What this enormous machine learns, however, will have far-reaching consequences. Consider the most recent particle that was discovered for the first time with the aid of existing infrastructure. As the largest and most powerful particle accelerator ever constructed, the Large Hadron Collider LHC is a technological marvel. Its circular tunnel is nearly 17 miles in diameter and required testing at the cost of billions of dollars. Switzerland is home to CERN, a European particle physics lab. But what exactly is a particle accelerator and why is it necessary? This apparatus provides high-energy proton beams to subatomic particles in a safe, contained setting. Scientists can then examine the subsequent interaction. In other words, the LHC allows scientists to check the robustness of theoretical predictions. Using the LHC, scientists have been able to recreate conditions similar to those that existed a billionth of a second after the Big Bang. Among these are occurrences that haven't occurred naturally since the first few microseconds after the Big Bang. If there's a new story about subatomic particles, chances are good that it will be about LHC because of how crucial this facility is to modern scientific research. Therefore, it was not confusing at all when headlines around the world read, Physicists discover ghost particles for the first time in an atom smasher. Particle physicists were excited about the news of the discovery because neutrinos are so elusive. Neutrinos provide a new lens through which scientists can study subatomic particles. They made progress toward deducing the cosmological function of neutrinos. As elusive as neutrinos may be, their abundance in the universe cannot be denied. While watching this video, for instance, about 100 billion neutrinos per square centimeter will pass through your body, but you won't notice their presence or absence. These microscopic substances permeate the entire universe. They originate from a wide variety of sources, including stellar nuclear fires, supernovae, cosmic rays, radioactive decay, and more. Because neutrinos have no charge and leave behind almost no residue, they elude detection. They're so light that an election would have to lift 6 million of them to equal their weight. They travel at nearly the speed of light and rarely interact with matter. Many scientists believe that neutrinos are as elusive as ghosts. If you put in the effort, you can capture neutrinos. Neutrinos have been found in a few previous experiments. These include the Super Cameo Candy Detector in Japan, Fermilab's Many Boon, and the Antarctic Ice Cube Detector. They all use a technique called Cherenkov radiation, which is an indirect way to find neutrinos. This is the basic idea behind the Cherenkov method of finding neutrinos. When a plane goes faster than the speed of sound, it makes a sonic boom. When a particle travels at the speed of light through a medium that slows light, like water, it leaves behind a faint blue glow. Scientists look for this glow when a neutrino directly hits an atomic nucleus. But this method can only find neutrino signatures as neutrinos from the sun pass through the Earth. For example, it doesn't say anything about the type of high-energy neutron that is made when particles smash into each other, as can be seen in a particle accelerator like the LHC. Neutrinos can be found by using the LHC. Part of the reason for this is that the collider uses magnets to move particles around a circular collision path, and the detectors are scattered along these curves. Neutrinos don't have effect on these magnetic traffic signs, so they go beyond the edge of the detector's path. To find out more about this, scientists and the Phaser collaboration made a new neutrino detector called Basirno. This Basirno is made from thick plates of lead and tungsten. The light-sensitive layers between these plates are called an emulsion. The first step is to make the neutrinos collide with the atomic nuclei on the metal plates, which makes particle byproducts. The next step is familiar to older photographers. 
the emulsion byproducts react with the neutrino byproducts, leaving the shape of the particles as they move through the emulsion layers when the emulsion is developed and the particles are studied. Leaving behind them, scientists realized that some of the marks were made by particles called neutrinos. In fact, they were able to tell which of the three types of neutrino particle flavors they had found. The choices are tau, muon, and electron. This result gave them confidence that they had chosen the right spot inside the huge LHC ring to look for neutrinos and that their new detector could see them. A Cyrano is better than the previous experiment in many ways. For example, the Super Cameo candy requires 50,000 tons of water. In contrast, Vasern only weighed 29 kilograms, was also made from leftovers on sun. Remember that we said a neutrino comes in three flavors? Tau neutrinos are the least common and hardest to find. In fact, before Vasirino, tau neutrinos had only been seen 10 times the first time around 20 years earlier. Vasirino is sensitive enough to find different types of neutrinos and flavors, and it can also tell the difference between neutrinos and antineutrinos, which is where things get interesting. Antineutrinos are simply neutrinos with the opposite charge. Neutrinos don't have a charge, as you may recall. This may seem like contradictory information, but both neutrinos and antineutrinos have no electromagnetic charge. The opposite charge stands for a neutron's lepton number, which is a kind of quantum number used to describe the properties of subatomic particles. Scientists have many questions about neutrinos. They don't know how neutrinos and antineutrinos differ. A CERNO will teach them neutrinos. The CERNO researchers said they would spend 2022 searching for 10,000 neutrinos. Knowing where matter comes from and why so much of it is dark will help you answer some of these questions. Supernova researchers look up, right? They've been looking in surprising places lately. They study trees to learn about supernovas. What do trees on Earth have to do with supernovas billions of years ago and billions of miles away? Stars die spectacularly. The star explodes, sending its outer parts into space. Gamma radiation bombards space for four years. Scientists are searching trees for, for star deaths. Supernovas are rare despite the universe's many stars. No one knows how often stars explode in our Milky Way galaxy. The last supernova was over 400 years ago. Some observations suggest 1 to 3 per century. Robert Breckenbridge, an NGO scientist at the University of Colorado Boulder, and his colleagues found what may be 40,000-year-old supernova tree rings. The team said four supernovas close enough to Earth in the last 15 years left marks in the trees. Then how? Radioactive carbon-14, the clue, is abundant. Radiocarbon is rarer than other carbon forms on Earth. Cosmic rays from space hit a nitrogen atom in the upper atmosphere to start a nuclear reaction that makes radiocarbon. If you know where to look, radiocarbon is always available on Earth due to cosmic rays. It occurs naturally in tree rings, and every once in a while, a huge radiocarbon spike appears and persists in the tree rings for several years before fading away. Cosmological activity spikes are typically attributed to solar flares and storms because the sun is the known source of such events. Trees that are not located near the equator grow during the milder months and die back during the colder months annually. This alternate growth and dormancy pattern creates a ring within the tree's wood. Touching the tree will reveal the ring. Newer rings can be found closer to the tree's surface, with increasing age as one moves deeper into the tree. If you count the rings in a tree, you can determine how old it is. By analyzing the pattern of tree rings in the wood used to construct ancient structures, archaeologists can determine when those structures were constructed. Breckenridge applied his expertise to the problem of predicting the effects of supernovas and tree ring data. To test the validity of the supernova hypothesis, he hypothesized that nearby supernovae would emit a lot of gamma radiation or radio, or that carbon in a tree would make the rings more radioactive than other rings. For the research, Breckenridge and his team sift through historical documents. They catalog every single supernova discovered in the last 40,000 years. By examining the nebula, which contains supernova remnants, they located the explosion. The radiocarbon spikes and tree rings from the same period were added to the list. I'm curious as to their findings. 
Well, it appears that the eight nearest supernovae all caused radiocarbon spikes around the same time. There was a 3% increase in radiocarbon after the Vela supernova, which occurred 12,500 years ago, in 800 light years from the Earth. The G114.3 plus 00.3 supernova occurred about 7,700 years ago and was located about 2,300 light years away. It triggered a 2% increase. The Vela Jr. is also estimated to have occurred around 2,800 years ago. There was an increase in radiocarbon of 1.4 during that time. Supernova HB9, which occurred between 1,400 and 5,400 years ago and was 1,000 to 4,000 light years away, was also discovered. This one coincided with the 0.8 increase in radiocarbon levels. Scientists are now trying to validate Breaking Bridge's discovery. They are hoping that the tree rings method will help them nail the timing of many supernovas that have been difficult to date. They will also gain more understanding of how stars explode. Let's hear what you think of the mysteries of the universe in the comment section below. And if you like this video, consider subscribing to our channel. And don't forget to click the notification bell to get updates on new educational videos. That is all for now. I'll see you in next video.